Niagara University recently launched the Zoom LTI. So Zoom Proud will be going away in December of 2022 and we'll be moving to Zoom LTI, which you can find right on your course's navigation menu. Zoom LTI is the superior program for connecting Zoom in Canvas. We didn't have it from the onset because when we moved to Zoom, Zoom wasn't accepting any new LTI clients because it was the height of the pandemic. But now that we are able to have it, we thought we'd add it. It's quite straightforward. When you click on Zoom LTI, you'll notice that it launches Zoom for you. It takes a second and it pushes you right into a Zoom scheduler. Your upcoming meetings show here. Any previous meetings you had scheduled through the LTI integration would show here, which since this is brand new, you probably don't have any. You still have access to your personal meeting room if you're someone who prefers to use that. And then your cloud recordings will show here as well. And remember, you can adjust the date to find older cloud recordings. If you wanna launch into your full Zoom portal or your full Zoom suite, you can click on all my Zoom meetings and recordings. Note that you also retain the ability to change your time zone, which was an issue in the past, and the, and the language that you use. I encourage you to check out the options before you use this for your next class. One thing you may be interested in learning more about is you now have the option to have an attendance policy. So when you click on the three dots and you go to attendance report setting, by default you might see this is worth like 10 points. Um, you have the option to change it to just zero points. And you have a few other options here. If you want to apply a late policy for jumping on the Zoom late, you can do that after so many minutes. Um, you can say, you know, if they're having unstable internet, as long as they're at least 70% they're of the time, that's 100%. But as I say, you can make this worth nothing and just actually have the attendance report just, just for your own records. But just know it's an option for you. You schedule meetings just like you always have. Click on schedule a new meeting. By default, the topic is going to be your course name, which can be handy. The description field and the section field are optional. Obviously, you'll put in the date and the time the class meets at and for the duration. Keep in mind that these are typable. So if your class meets at like 1210, for example, you can actually type in 1210 and then select it from the menu and it will save that for you. The duration. Remember that Zoom never actually shuts off. So if you go over an hour, that's no big deal. This is just a scheduler. And then, of course, you can set it to recur. Um, the default is daily, which is probably not what you want. Perhaps you want weekly, um, and you want it on Mondays and Wednesdays, and you want it to end January 30th, that's fine, or after how many classes, however you like, that sets it up for you. Requiring registration means that students must sign up to get the link to join. I would encourage you to stay away from that. This is only going to be visible to students who are already registered for your class anyways. So registration would be really more for any meetings that you're having outside of class. You are still recommended to have at least one security setting enabled. Um, it's up to you if you want to have a passcode, a waiting room, or requiring authentication to join. Authenticated users means they must sign into their Zoom accounts before they can get into class. Um, they can't just join from the web browser. So if you don't like the passcode or the waiting room, that's a good option for you. Uh, video, you know, if you want to have your camera on and you want your students to have their cameras on, you'll click on on. I always encourage you to allow both telephone and computer audio so if something is happening and their microphone is not working, they can always pick up the telephone and call in the phone that way. And then you have a few other options as well. If you want them to be able to jump in before you are there, if you want them to come in muted. The breakout rooms pre-assigned can be handy if you use breakout rooms quite a bit. And then the option to record it automatically or of course you always retain the ability to record um, once the meeting has started. Advanced options would be if you are scheduling on behalf of somebody else or, or someone else can schedule on your behalf. An alternative host is someone who can start this meeting um, other than yourself. So if for some reason you're not going to make class that day, but you want maybe your TA to start class, you can list your alternative host there and go ahead and say save. Once scheduled, you can come back to your course meetings. You'll see them all there. And then once you're ready to start, you can go ahead and click start. Your students see this just as well. They go through it just like very similar to Zoom Prod. When they're in your Canvas course, they'll click on Zoom LTI and they'll be re redirected as well. And then, you know, of course, join the meeting. If you needed to delete just one class meeting, like perhaps we're not having class on you know, December 2nd because it's a holiday, you can delete just that one occurrence or you can delete all of them. It's entirely up to you. Um, so if there's just one class in the recurring, you can take that off. 
This shift to the full Zoom LTI integration should be an improvement because now we are no longer dependent on the third party application, Zoom Broad, to connect Canvas and Zoom. We are connecting the two directly, so there will be less downtime overall. If you have any questions as you play with this, of course, you can always reach out to me, or there's also the Get Training module is quite helpful as well.